mixing music with vocals in DaVinci Resolve 15. When you want to mix music, you may be tempted to go the common way and wrong way of using your keyframes and increasing and reducing the level and amplitude, like the volume of the music based on whether there are vocals or not, there's dialogue or not. This is really the wrong way to go about it because you're gonna completely distract your audience and I'll show you how wrong it is, okay? Let's go back now to the timeline. I'm gonna take you to the timeline here and I'll show you the scene. This is a scene, it's a dramatic scene. It's a little girl who has lost her father. The father and was trying to save his daughter. They were caught in a war zone in the middle of a fire exchange. The father got hit, got hit in the head. He dies on her laps. It is a dramatic scene. The child performance is absolutely astonishing. We are going to bring to that more dramatic depth but using uh, devastatingly emotional uh, music, the two are going to work together to give us the right, emo to deliver the right emotions to the audience. Now, you do not want to mess up and ruin the scene with the wrong mixing technique. Okay, now I'll show you the wrong mi mixing technique because I insist on doing that. That's uh, so that you are able to see the difference. And then I'll show you the right way of doing it using the equalizer, your best friend. All right, now let's listen. Let, what we're going to do, this is just a very short scene of 30 seconds. Uh, we have vocals. We're going to listen to the vocals first. Then we listen to the music alone while keeping the image, but no vocals. Then we're going to the listen, listen to the music and vocals without mixing. Then I'm going to show you the wrong way of doing it, which you're going to find everywhere. Um, and then we do it the right way. And I'll let you decide. Um, whether you want to follow the professional way of doing it or you want to keep with the uh, keyframes. All right, so let's do that. I'm going to go back way, uh, way back here to the beginning and we've got just 30 seconds. I'm going to mute the music for now and let the vocals run. Okay, so uh, this is um, the aftermath, like after this scene happened after another one where uh, they were running away and he was trying to save her. So let's listen to this. <laughs> Okay, undeniably an astonishing performance from the, ch the child actress. Now let's move and get only the music. So I will solo the music here. Yes, I know we're working in the timeline, but for now, I'd like you to focus on this, the, the, the scene and uh, more than, than on the music, okay? Okay, so this was the music part of it. All right, so let's bring these two beautiful things together. That is mixing. Now, you have brilliant input. Don't mess it up with the cooking. Okay, when you've got ingredients, wonderful ingredients, we're not going to mess up with the cooking. Okay, so we need to have proper mixing. Let's move now to Fairlight. All right, we are here in Fairlight. And what we're going to do is we are going to... Um, Mix it the wrong way. Shall we do that? The wrong way is going to be to create what we call keyframes. So let me just increase a little bit. I'm going to take away the mixer for now and increase the width of this. Now, I actually was thinking even not to show you how to create keyframes because that was my, uh, my attempt to make sure you don't use this wrong way but I have the responsibility to show you how to create a keyframe anyway. So let's do that. 
creating a keyframe is quite simple. Just press Alt or Option if you have Mac Option, if you have a Windows Alt, and then you click. So this is a vocal, okay? we have got a vocal here. And then here you have less of it, and then you've got another vocal, another vocal. Let's say we're going to work with this vocal here. At this level, I'm going to create a keyframe, and then there's another keyframe here. And at the end here, I'm going to have another keyframe. I'm just pressing Alt or Option, and then clicking on keyframe. And then I bring slowly a little bit down this. If you bring it too much, you're going to be uh, like just reducing the music too much. But you see the impact of what you're doing on the waveform. See, on this waveform, if you increase it or decrease it, you see the impact of it. So if you reduce it a bit, it's going to be something like this. All right. You can even increase the, the, the width even more to see what you're doing. Okay. Right. All right, let me just bring again my vocals so that I know what I'm doing. And by the way, we're able actually to see the vocals here as well. This is a vocal and this is music, all right? All right, so this is the wrong way to do it. Please don't go this route, but I have the responsibility to show you how bad it sounds. Let's do that. <laughs> absolutely terrible and when you accumulate this over your project it gives the impression of a very cheap amateur project you cannot go this route and i will not try with other vocals i'm not going to start putting other keyframes i hope you got the point okay let's now control z and just remove these keyframes i'm just pressing control z now kill the last keyframe okay Goodbye to the keyframes. We don't need you. We, we rarely need keyframes in Fairlight. Okay, now let's go back to our scene and let's do it the proper way, shall we? Now, the proper way consists of understanding the vocals. Now, the vocals are, and this is extremely important. Now, this is where you really need to know the numbers, all right? We talked about this, but I'm going to talk about it again. Vocals for male start at 100. The base, the base frequency, starting frequency for male is 100 hertz. All right, this, these are important numbers, right? So we need to keep that in mind. For female, you only have two numbers, so it's, it, sh it shouldn't be um, a challenge. Uh, you, females is 150, right? Uh, how relevant is it in here? In this case, very relevant. But we, what we know, and the most important part of these numbers is the number 1,500. This is the one absolute number you want to keep in mind. 1,500. If you remember it, you're good to go. If you don't remember it, you're going to have to find it yourself, but you need to remember that actually 1,500 is what? Is the center, the core of the voice. It doesn't mean it's always the case, but you will never go wrong if you, if you, if you are somewhere in 1,500. It's anywhere between 1,000 and 3,000, okay? Um, so how do we, what do we do? Why am I talking about these numbers? I thought we were talking about mixing with vocals. That's exactly the point. What we're gonna do, because we know the vocal is all about between mostly, uh, mostly the core vocal is about 1,000 to 3,000, mostly playing at 1,500. Why don't we create room, space, inside the music track only? for that range of frequencies. So what I'm going to do, instead of reducing the volume of the music, I'm going to create room and space for that range of frequency. Let's do that. Where do we find that? Now, we are going to use our best friend. Exactly, the equalizer. We come to the mixer here, and because music is on a specific track, you're going to do that for the whole track. Um, you may be tempted to use the, um, ins the um, using the inspector here, you may be tempted to use this clip equalizer. In this very, very specific circumstance, it works because you only need one of these numbers. You only need one. Uh, we were complaining that actually we have too few for the purposes of doing the equalizer, uh, equalizer, um, uh, equalizer work. But for music mixing, it could be fine. So you want to go this route? Absolutely fine. Go do it there. You can do it in the clip uh, mixer. No problem. But I'm going to do it in the track mixer. Okay? Let's go to the track mixer. 